The Appalachians are famed as the place where early English, Scots and Irish music endured. Now a coal miner called Doc Boggs created an eerie fusion of that mountain past with sounds he'd learned from black musicians, a fusion that foreshadows the future of American music. Come on, you good time people, while I've got money to spend. Tomorrow might be money, and I knew have a dollar not a friend. Doc Boggs took from the guts. He played the bluesiest and darkest songs with the banjo as a serious instrument. And he sounded like he was in a different world, a different age. Eat me cornbread when I'm hungry, good people. Corn whiskey when I'm dry. Pretty women are standing around me. Sweet heaven when I die. Today, Doc Boggs' reputation grows and grows. I started playing banjo in my 40s, and, um, and it's all about Doc Boggs. It's all double C and G minor. I only play the kind of banjo that scares sheep, like really, really primitive. In the 20s, Doc Boggs was photographed only once. But luckily, an interview exists, recorded by Mike Seeger in 1963. Uh, I was born in 1898, down here at West Norton. I worked in the coal mine when I was just a boy. I never got to go to school too much. I was the youngest child out of a family of 10. I heard one colored fella, Negro, and I sneaked up the door where I could hear that music. And I listened, that fella picked that banjo. And so I just taken up playing And then I don't have seen another one play just exactly like me. And I played for parties, bean strings, and used to. And I was working in the coal mines in 1927 when uh, two men from New York, here these over Norton Hotel, trying out this mountain talent. They tried out about 50 or 75 musicians. I took that old banjo up there and I played about a verse of country blues. So uh, I noticed they all marked it good on the paper. And they come around with one beside me up to go to make phonograph records. And three weeks from that time, I was on my way to New York. He went down to the local clothier, Mr. Cohen, and uh, asked him to give him a good suit so he wouldn't look like a hick. I was self-conscious enough and I wanted to act as near like a human being as I should, as I could, but I was, I was afraid I'd make a lot of mistakes. And we went into New York on the train and played for every train crew, I reckon, between Ashland and New York City. So I made four records, eight songs, and I figured on making some more. He worked at this new craft of recording, making his songs fit the exact length required for a record. I practiced an awful lot. I even tried myself, and if, I, if my song wasn't hard long enough, and well, I always need a, a verse to make it come out and make a two minute and 40 minute second record. The records help me get to the crowds. Oh, my daddy told me, and my mama told me to. Don't you go off, honey. Let the men make a fool out of you. 